great start this morning. Uh, I suspect we have a flat on the car, so I'm just going to start the compressor and go and investigate. Well, that's one side. We'll take a look around here. Yeah, that's suspiciously low to me. So maybe we'll crank her up and uh, have a look if there's a nail in it. Just my luck that there will be. As predicted, screw. There she is, look, the little toe rag. Oh my goodness, I mean, that's just all we need, isn't it? Oh, that's another 80 quid down the swanner. Gotta be one of the worst design freaking jacks as well, man. Good start to the week. Happy Tuesday. Right, so we've got that palaver over and done with. Let's see if we can use up all that argon in that bottle before Stuart gets here to do the swap for me. I'm just going to weld the rest of them trims on, I think. So we've got three more, three more of the edge trims to go on and around. There. And then once they're on, the flat section on the top. And then we've just got the one tank to do. And we can start looking at timber then. Oh, there we go, folks. We're down to 10 PSI in this bag, boy. So Stuart's just taken the Parker's cylinder back for me. We're gonna get a refund on that. That should be about 100, 120 pounds, which will pay for this big bastard. And then we're gonna shoot across, change this, and hopefully on the way back, nip into a wood yard or two. I might have found some matchboarding, some timber, some tongue and groove, some shiplap. Not sure what it is yet. But hopefully, I measure up all these tanks. We'll figure out how many lengths we're going to need, how many are linear meters, and we'll go and pick some timber up as well. And then uh, we're going to probably move next week away from welding, 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 welding videos to varnishing, 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 timber cladding, timber cladding videos. But at least we get to move off the welding for a little bit because we've almost had two weeks solid of it, I think. Right, let's get this disconnected, get this tank ready for Stuart to, well, me and Stuart to take back to the guys in Works Up. Right, we also want to calculate how much timber we're going to need for these tanks. So we've got five tanks, which have a diameter of 900. So we need to find the circumference of that, which will give us how many meters around it's gonna be. And then we also have, are these, these tanks are, uh, let's call it one, three, 1300 mil tall. And then we have one tank with a, diameter of 900 which is a thousand mil tall so the circumference of a circle with a diameter of 900 therefore an r of 450 a radius of 450 gives a circumference of 2827 millimeters 
So that's two. So let's call that three meters. So we're going to need uh, five times three. Let's call it six, and we're going to have some spare timber left. So six times three is eighteen. So it's eighteen meters. That's eighteen meters around is what we're looking for. So if we've got 18 meters going around the tank, or around all the tanks, and the timber that we're going to buy is 120 mil wide, so that'll be 18 over 120, actually it'll be 18,000 over 120, which gives us 150. So that's 150 lengths. So if they come in one meter lengths, if the tank's one meter high, that'd be 150 lengths. They're not, the tanks are 1.3 or 1300. So it's 150 times 1.3, which gives us 195 linear meters there we go 195 linear meters so if that's 55 pence a meter it's going to be 107 pound 25p fingers crossed that's what it's going to come to right we're in the van Gemma's got the car she's going to pick the kids up this afternoon uh, Sarah's looking after Abigail, Dom's at, uh, at Gemma's mum's. So we're going to shoot across now to pick up the Argon from Workshop and then nip to Ranskill and see if we can pick up some matchboarding and timber whilst we are there. So fingers crossed they'll have some, they'll have some timber that we need in stock. It's so Argon collected from the chaps at uh, Workshop Shop Blasting Company. He's all right, actually. Nice cash deal. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Fucking hell. Got a fucking chav here. Fucking idiot. I think he was out of the car. Yeah. Well, Stuart nearly had Argon bottling in the back of his head for some ch if it wasn't for you. Flying on to roundabout at about 45 mile an hour. Jesus, Workshop. Get a grip. The woodyard, you have arrived. Oh, they've got wood. Well, that was bloody value for money. 140 pieces at 1.9 meters long. Loaded up, paid the man cash, we're off. Simple as that, I recommend it. The woodyard in Ranskill. Top draw, there's someone coming down still. I said, if you want to be with me, So that's the timber that we fetched and everything else, the argon. So yeah, we've got 140 lengths at 1.9 meters. I think that's gonna be bob on once we get that insulated and clad. Oh, that's the next thing we need still. Need some insulation. A oh, lovely butterfly. A flutterby. I really do have a wee bit of a dab on. I've just spent uh, 20 minutes heating this tank up with the TIG torch. 
you can see what I've done there it's kind of just put the torch on some fairly decent ampage like 100 amps hold it about six inches away from the workpiece and flow it backwards not six inches an inch away from the workpiece and flow it backwards and forwards over a six inch area and what that did was get the metal shining red hot to allow me to beat it because the tank had like peeled in if you know what I mean where the bar the stiffening ring met so I learned a lesson and I also had to do it there as well so the next tanks I make I have to be double sure that the rings at the top are actually rings and not odd shapes I'm going to find it difficult to make the lids for these tanks because they're not circular so each tank's going to have to have its own lid distinct for that tank but I think I've got the worst out of it it was almost egg shaped I guess you might say but uh, I've rounded it up so now the idea is uh, to put the rest of the edging strip on I'm just waiting for it to cool down a little bit now but that is the edging strip you can see how it goes on there like that and then once that's on that will be pretty much two of the fermenters completed not invincible. Not invincible. Not invincible. Right, so I have to get inside to draw the lid for the HLT. So, uh, Stu's going to allow me in. Hopefully, let me back out. There's the edge. So, I'm going to want at least. Right. There goes nothing, a bit more, you have to almost 45 it. Right, I'm potholing fingers. Right, so, oh yeah, goes like that. Yeah, go on then. Right, so, can you see the line? On which side? Side. Yeah, that's yeah, and pull it towards it. There you go. So the outer edge is on the line. Yeah, I can, I can just see the red line. Right, I want it to go forward then. What, towards you? No, this way. Yeah, I want to see the red line on the inside. Okay. You see it? I can. So I've measured the widest part. I'm not going to go through the rigmarole of cutting all these tank lids separately. I've measured the widest part, which is 820 mil. So I've set a centre point at 410. We're just going to cut it with a circle cutter. At least I'll get a nice lid there, regardless of the shape of the top of the tanks. And I'm going to do it the same. I'm just going to measure the tops. Same with tipping them upside down. It's a ball like that. I just really don't need to do. So I'm just going to pop a pilot hole in here. Now I'm going to pull off this protective sheeting because it melts. 
and then we're going to cut it with the plasma cutter. Signing off, it's dark outside. I'll show you the lid before I go. There we go, she fits, but something went wrong because I'm a few millimeters short this edge. So the next one will be made a little bit bigger. But I've hit it with a sander, uh, the grinder, flapping wheel I mean, and uh, she's all, she's all cushy. So we'll come back and we'll do some more work on that tomorrow. I'm about to kill the lights. I will see you in the morning.